Welcome to Unit 7 of EDSE 510. In this unit, the only assignment for credit will be a discussion, and you'll be posting in that discussion over the two weeks of our unit. You'll notice that the assignment uh, deadlines and posting deadlines for discussions in a two-week unit are a little bit different. So the first post, and remember that source citation is required. You want to integrate sources in APA format to support your statements. The first post will be required by the first Sunday night of the unit. So basically, we've been in the unit for a week at that time at 11.59 PM. And that's my own standard time. And then the responses will be required by the second Sunday night. So halfway through the unit, it's been a week. You'll want to have that first, the initial response posted with your source citation to support your statements. And then you've got one more week to review and reflect upon the posts of your colleagues and to respond to at least two people. Remember, it never hurts to respond to more than two people. It can be really valuable to integrate questions, other source citation, examples, and um, any other resources that you can find, articles, videos, anything relevant and reliable. You really get out of the discussions what you put into them. So make this a great opportunity to learn and to engage. And that's what we're doing for Unit 7. So we will have two weeks. You just wrapped up the You Be the Judge assignment, and I know that that was a pretty heavy workload, so this is a little bit of a lighter unit working on that discussion board. And you'll see that Unit 8 also has a discussion board, but Unit 9 is upcoming, and there is a pretty heavy assignment in that unit. It is a 100-point assignment, and it is called the Educational Philosophy Paper. So we'll get into that in more detail in future video lectures, but if you find yourself with time on your hands during this Unit 7 and you'd like to look ahead and kind of see what that assignment is asking for and what it's getting into, it never hurts to start planning. So you'll notice that Unit 7 for the content is split into three parts. The first part focuses on a couple different topics of development, typical, oops, typical and atypical and some of that will focus as well on cognitive development. Unit 7 Part 2 dives further into cognitive disabilities. And then Unit 7 Part 3 will see a much bigger focus on working with students who are gifted and talented. And this is a very content-heavy section here, um, Part 3. So you'll see there are a lot of resources. So in Unit 7 Part 1, taking a look at theories of cognitive development and considering what would be cons uh, what would be identified as typical versus atypical development. So for your readings for this part of the unit, you're just working on what's provided to you here. So there is a PowerPoint. And a lot of this PowerPoint, as mentioned right here, is more from a medical approach. But that information is really valuable for us, um, even as practitioners in education. You know that there are a lot of ties there and things that we're looking for in development as we're identifying various uh, potential areas of need or potential areas of eligibility for special education services. So this uh, presentation will just look through infancy through adolescence and what's considered typical development versus atypical. Kind of interesting, some visuals here about the brain and we're looking through growth of the brain, child through adult, and then this developmental timing. Um, so this is a presentation that you can just look through and think about what is developing for children as they grow older and what's appropriate at each time. And uh, we're also looking into reading here and the development of those skills and the different parts of the brain and what we're utilizing as we work on different skill sets. So speech and language, obviously those are connected oftentimes to reading where there are some ties there. Um, processing of facial expression. So this will talk with us about a child growing over time and what they can see and identify and recognize the concept of faces. And as we know, we were just hitting on language in earlier slides, but this is also really quite relevant for social emotional development and um, those attachments. So some of those could be related to concerns, for instance, in the area of autism spectrum disorder, when we're seeing some atypical responses to uh, faces or nonverbal expressions of people that the child is encountering. We're always looking for that reciprocation um, and any concerns in that regard so that children can be evaluated as soon as possible. 
And we know, particularly speaking of autism, that we have the medical diagnosis that can be gathered uh, by working with a healthcare provider, with a certified physician, and then from there, somebody in the medical field can provide that information uh, with a release or parents or guardians can give that to the school district. But there also can be an educational identification of autism. In Colorado, we can look through uh, the criteria there for eligibility under autism spectrum disorder and make that determination for the school setting. And this might be uh, different from the process that would be gone through by medical professionals, of course. So there are school-based evaluations that can be conducted with the help of a school psychologist. So just while we're on autism as a topic of conversation here, I will click on the eligibility criteria, and that's on the CDE IEP forms website. And this is kind of a helpful thing to check out when we're thinking about typical and atypical development, especially as that presentation was hitting on speech, language, processing of facial expressions. We're thinking about what the child is going through and considering the cognitive and social emotional factors over time. And um, this is a good form for you to check out as you're thinking about development, particularly when considering autism spectrum disorder. Just as we move forward, these are things that we'll need to see, um, these criteria that are listed here for the child eligible under autism spectrum disorder. So that's a PowerPoint for you to check out that does hit on some of that medical information. This is a very helpful um, resource for you. This is the CDC providing information on developmental milestones. This will be photos and videos for all of these ages hitting up to five years. Very interesting to just learn about. We'll click three years here and what's considered typical versus atypical and what we're really looking for. Um, concern for another, understanding mine or someone else's, a wide range of emotions. That's what we want to see for somebody who's three years old, and that's only just under the social emotional. So this is a really good supplement, the CDC resource, to connect with the information that was in that PowerPoint. Obviously, cognitive development. And then the physical and uh, motor development, that movement component, okay? So wanting to see running, climbing, and this can be provided all the way up to five years. This is also a really helpful link. You click that plus sign if you're concerned what to do, uh, and this is good for families to check out. So not only for us in practice, but also for any families that you encounter in your personal or professional life who are wondering about development and what might be on track, this is a great resource. So feel free to pass it along. Here are a couple videos for you regarding development, which will supplement that material as well. Pathways.org is another helpful website. It's got some videos for you. So really take advantage of the extra time in this unit to review uh, this information regarding cognitive development. You'll see there's a PDF article linked for you here. And that's all about different theories of development. Vygotsky, Piaget, this is really foundational human development content. Would encourage you to check all of that out as we proceed. And then in this part two, we're going to be looking more at cognitive disabilities. And uh, there is some assigned reading from the textbook, and that is for this part of the unit. So information for you regarding cognitive disabilities, and this might be considered intellectual disability, or ID would be uh, the language that might be used. There are also some other examples of things that are related to cognition. You might be thinking about ADHD, and for special education eligibility criteria, ADHD would be falling under, under other health impairment, OHI. Uh, so try to kind of remove those acronyms or those labels of eligibility as you're examining this list and instead to really think about what would fall under a cognitive disability or an area of cognitive impact because you'll see it's much more than just the traditional intellectual disability that we might be thinking of when we hear about cognitive scores. This could be related to Down syndrome, for instance, or even a traumatic brain injury. Here are some documents and some ideas for working with children with cognitive disabilities and particularly the concept of specially designed instruction. This is a link with a simulation that can help us to understand what a person with ADHD might be experiencing. And um, there are different areas here for reading, writing, and mathematics as well. 
So those are some interesting things to check out. You will need a flash plugin to work through those. So just keep in mind that technological requirement. This is information regarding autism spectrum disorder as well. And obviously that's a really valuable piece of information for us to have. Um, take a look particularly at this link that gives us information about Temple Grandin. I'm sure you may be familiar with Temple Grandin already, um, but she is a person who has autism spectrum disorder and she is a professor at Colorado State University, who's also a very famous speaker and provides some really valuable information regarding autism spectrum disorder, as well as uh, her work in agriculture. And she's done some amazing things academically and socially over her life. This is information about sexual assault, particularly for people with intellectual disabilities. This is all optional for you to review if you choose to do so. It is not required. And these are several organizations for support for people with cognitive disabilities. So you may be familiar with the Council for Exceptional Children, that's CEC. Um, definitely review those resources. It's good to see what's going on in the community. And finally, this is the rather lengthy part of the unit regarding students who are classified or categorized as gifted and talented. So we'll just refer in the unit to that as a GT. And you'll see the specific definition of GT here and different areas in which we might see this emerge. And you'll think about Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Obviously, this is not just in math, for instance, uh, or reading, for instance. There are many different ways that a child can be gifted. And that's why we're going into the varied phases of gifted and talented students. So this will provide this is a great document because it looks at traditional perceptions um, and then different areas that we might see this or how it might emerge. But listed here is what we might originally think of when we're looking at this particular area where a student might be gifted or advanced. Okay, so really interesting, gives us a lot of perspective about different backgrounds um, or even kind of the twice exceptional consideration that we'll see throughout this unit. And twice exceptional uh, as a review would be a student who is eligible under a disability and also qualifies for gifted and talented programming. So English language learners, we do definitely need to think about the relationship between students who are in ELL programming and gifted and talented factors there. So this is a piece of reading for you, um, different methods that might be used and the pros and cons, particularly, you know, when taking all these variables into consideration, as we just mentioned, a student who's an English language learner or perhaps twice exceptional. There are some subjective methods here like nomination, for instance, versus the objective methods, those uh, particularly the standardized tests listed here, those assessments that might be used, formal testing to determine GT eligibility. So more information regarding twice exceptional, um, just mentioned previously in this lecture, but that's a really important thing for us to keep an eye on when we're working with students. Oftentimes, unfortunately, people might just think that a student has an IEP and then move along thinking, okay, this child has been determined eligible under a disability. And for, for instance, GT factors might not be taken into consideration as much, and they definitely should be because there are many students who are twice exceptional. So you might see strengths and challenges, and this can be a difficult circumstance for some students. Um, who are working both with these high abilities as well as with whatever impact of the disability has been identified. So this is pretty cool. Review these profiles of the gifted and talented student. All information about what you might see or what commonly might be noticed um, for them. <clears throat> and that's a helpful document as well. Traits. You might see a child who gets off task easily or becomes easily bored and therefore behavior problems might occur. They might do the work very quickly and that's because maybe they're far past it. Okay. 
And then you'll see several other resources in the unit about teaching and working with students who are gifted and talented. And we'll hit on our discussion here. So you'll be choosing one of our major topics from the unit. This could be students who are gifted and talented, typical versus atypical development, cognitive disabilities. You're going to need to select three resources that were provided and you're going to answer these questions. And then you're going to find an additional resource related to your topic area and respond to at least two colleagues. Have a great week.